The balloon incident literally came out of the blue. <laughs> it was uh, kind of humorous at first. I couldn't say today that the U.S. is not trying to contain China. It's forcing China to develop its indigenous market in semiconductors. And President uh, Biden and President Xi need to be talking more. The balloon incident in the United States is a um, fairly deep probe of uh, U.S.-China relations in terms of attitudes on both sides. It was uh, kind of humorous at first, and it is said that uh, some of the other um, concerns that Americans have had at high levels in the United States in terms of uh, uh, different uh, strategic interests in the South China Sea or Taiwan or or issues of human rights, or, or, or uh, uh, cyber um, security breaches, and uh, uh, it, it have been advanced, but they weren't visible to people. Here was something that was directly visible, uh, that um, certainly was used by certain politicians to stir up ac activity, uh, a, an, an anti-China. Um, uh, position has been increasingly so in the United States, but it does probe the uh, bipartisan nature of the U.S. concerns about China. Uh, I think the vote in the Congress, uh, I, in my lifetime, I never re remember a, uh, a unanimous vote that strongly uh, where, where there was no dissent whatsoever, like four, 419 to zero yep. in terms of condemning the incident. Gavel. Um, and so uh, between the political side and the personal the side, it had sort of emotional effect. There is similarity in both countries, which uh, to me is, uh, is a very unfortunate uh, to be heading in that wrong direction. And if you analyze U.S.-China relations now in an age of intense social media and news all the time and everybody has access and where uh, patriotism is strong and nationalism has become very strong in both countries and indeed in most countries around the world. Uh, outrage, the public, uh, uh, uncompromising nature is to be expected, um, which was why at the beginning of the balloon incident when China expressed regret, that was a very significant statement. Uh, as soon as the, the, the U.S. and U.S. politicians became very aggressive after that, uh, China then had to change their position from one of regret to one of, of, of toughness and not going to change. Um, and that's, again, a natural result of, uh, of, of today's world where uh, all societies, no matter how, whether they call themselves democratic or, or authoritarian or whatever, they have to be sensitive to public opinion in today's world. I couldn't say today that the U.S. is not trying to contain China. I can't say that anymore because, in fact, uh, it is. And the whole um, narrative around uh, semiconductors and the whole story really relates to that. That's the way economics has run, uh, is now being, um, being altered because of the strategic interests the fact that the U.S. has now created an industrial policy to support a, a U.S. semiconductor industry manufacturing uh, is a radical change because semiconductor manufacturing is not optimally economic in the U.S. And moreover, by not selling to China, it's forcing China to develop its own indigenous innovation and its indigenous market in semiconductors. It's not easy to do. China's put a lot of money into trying to do that. It's probably the single highest priority of the Chinese government uh, in terms of long-term strategy. One thing we can say for sure that it is non-economic uh, for, for everybody. Everybody loses in terms of the economic, uh, the, the economic structure by this, but security interests, national pride interests, uh, take precedent over uh, the economics. I mean, that's the, the one conclusion that we can have. The only uh, route for, for a solution to this is more communication. I mean, that sounds simple, but uh, President uh, Biden and President Xi uh, need to be talking more. And because that, e even if they're putting on 
an act together that puts public pressure on the diplomats and people working below them. So there's always going to be something. You know, it could be, it could be a, you know, we hope, we hope it'll never happen again, but the 2001 uh, uh, spy plane collision uh, over near Hainan Island uh, was a severe problem at the time. Uh, I, I covered that very well and spent a lot of time studying the, the, uh, all of the activities related to it. Uh, I can tell you this, that if that type of thing happened today, the consequences would be far worse than it was then, and it was pretty severe at that point as well. Uh, so the problem is, is that we have to be ready for incidents to occur. China's involvement in every issue of international importance is uh, a, a, both a fact and a potential benefit to the entire world. Uh, China has grown from something like 1.5 percent of world GDP um, after the Cultural Revolution uh, to, to 2022 was like 18.5 or 6 percent, uh, now getting close, approaching 20 percent of the world GDP. Uh, and it needs to counter a, a U.S. and increasingly a developed world uh, containment attitude. So all of those things are uh, push China to become more proactive, uh, which under President Xi Jinping that China has very strongly in terms of reaching out to the uh, developed world, developing world. Uh, so China has been working with countries to, on top of the Belt and Road with the inf infrastructure to build special economic zones, cheap manufacturing. Basically the route that China uh, took in the 1980s um, to, to begin building itself up from extreme poverty. Uh, they, 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 you couldn't do the Global Development Initiative unless you had at least the, be, the beginnings of the infrastructure through Belt and Road Initiative. So that is a very logical and very long-term commitment, many multiple decades of, of, of work to do there. Uh, the BRICS uh, with uh, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa is the BRICS program. And China is looking to develop various kinds of, uh, of different uh, organizational structures which can balance the, um, the uh, so-called hegemony of the U.S.'s control. So it's part of China's national interest. China has not been perfect and there's a lot of mistakes, but China's learned, so nobody knows the problems as well as the opportunities better than China in terms of constructing infrastructure and building special economic zones and rural health care and anti-poverty. So if you look at the three initiatives that China has put out under President Xi, the Belt and Road Initiative to build infrastructure, Global Development Initiative uh, to build on the infrastructure in terms of specific programs like anti-poverty, and then the Global Security Initiative uh, to give a sense of the importance of uh, of, of talk rather than fight, um, it, you know, China is making an important contribution to the world and should be recognized for it. Common prosperity has been a term that has been used in China for a long time, has been controversial in both in China as well as in the, uh, in, in, in internationally in terms of some of the uh, policies that are approaching to it. and. Uh, in terms of control of private business or various platform companies and technology um, and various other aspects of society, but, um, and, and therefore there could be some economic uh, 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 disincentives for some of the common prosperity. So as the economy has suffered through COVID, there might be a, a rebalancing between private sector and what it needs to do and, and common prosperity. But let no one doubt that common prosperity is a core vision that President Xi and the leadership have of what Chinese modernization is. And that there will always be modifications based on local and, uh, conditions, but common prosperity will be a key goal of Chinese modernization well, the, that will benefit the country. Uh, to say that the Chinese system works everywhere is uh, both a, a, an exaggeration and a a distraction uh, from the reality. The principles are important, how China worked for its own success and all the problems along the way that have occurred and, and, and why they occurred. I mean, we see the big problems uh, of development, including pollution and corruption, just to pick, pick two. 
uh, and, and so if we pick three, social inequality. So China's develop modernization approach uh, over the decades, the four and a half decades since it began, uh, have, have, has certainly succeeded. We see from the data that's obvious, you know, the greatest uh, economic transformation success story in human history. Uh, but it also had at least three big problems, pollution, corruption, and uh, a severe disparities in income. And each of those, particularly under President Xi, are being addressed.